Good afternoon, everyone. It is time for the Daily Wild Robot Read Aloud. We left off with Bright Bill making a new squirrel friend named Chit Chat. And now we're at chapter 39, The First Flight. Bright Bill had spent his entire life by the pond, and he was becoming very curious about what lay beyond his neighborhood. So one day, his mother said to him, Let us go for a walk, and I will show you more walk more water than you can possibly imagine. Roz placed the gosling on her flat shoulder, and the two of them set off across the island. They marched out of the forest, crossed the great meadow, and climbed up the hill until they were at the top of the island's western ridge. Before them was a grassy slope that descended all the way to the dark, choppy waves that surrounded the island. That is a lot of water! said the wide-eyed gosling. I'm a good swimmer, but I'm not good enough to swim across that pond. That's not a pond, said the robot. That is an ocean. I doubt any bird could swim across an ocean. Waves rolled in from the horizon. Seagulls circled above the shore. A steady breeze blew up, by the, blew up the slope. Brightbill's yellow fluff had recently changed over to a coat of silky brown feathers and he spread his feathery wings into the breeze. And then, Mama, look! For the briefest of moments, the wind lifted Brightbill off the ground, but he quickly tipped backward and thumped into the soft grass. I was flying, he squeaked. That was not flying, said Roz, looking back at her upside down son. Well, I was almost flying. I'm gonna try again. I have observed many birds in flight, said Roz, Sometimes they flap their wings quickly, and other times they fly without flapping at all. They, spent, they spread their wings and soar on the wind. So I was soaring, said Brightbill. Almost. There, look at that soaring seagull. It seems like she is not doing anything, but if you look closer, you will notice that she is making small adjustments with her wings and tail. I think you should try adjusting your wings in the, wa in the wind like her. Bright Bill hopped onto a rock and opened his wings wide. The wind is pushing me backward. Change the angle of your wings, said his mother. Let us see what happens when they slice through the air. Bright Bill slowly angled his wings downward. The more he turned them, the less the wind pushed him back. And just as his wings leveled off, Mama, look, he squeaked as his feet left to the ground. I'm soaring, I'm soaring. He hovered there for a second, rising a little higher than before, and then he sailed backward into the soft grass again. The gosling kept hopping onto the rock and kept riding the wind and kept tumbling into the grass until he started to find his wings. With each attempt, he floated a little higher and a little longer, and finally, Brightbill really did soar. He lifted high into the air and hung there, floating. He turned his wings down and felt himself drop. He wiggled his tail feathers and felt himself veering back and forth. I'm a natural, he squeaked. You are doing very well, said Roz, but you need to keep practicing. And so they spent the afternoon practicing up on the ridge. Once Brightbill was comfortable soaring, he tried flapping his wings. He flapped higher into the air and flapped in straight lines. He flapped around and around in circles. A big smile appeared on the gosling's face. Clearly, Bright Bill was designed to fly. I'm flying, Mama. I'm really flying. You are flying, said the robot. Very good. Brightbill was now a real flyer, but all that flying had worn him out. He lowered himself toward the ground and tumbled into the grass one last time. His landing still needed some work. Roz placed Brightbill on her shoulder and headed back to the nest. I can't believe I can fly now, Mama, said Brightbill in his sleepy voice. I just wish, I just wish you could fly with me. And then the gosling's words were replaced by his quiet, steady breathing. Chapter 40, The Ship. 
Brightville was a flying maniac. <laughs> Brightville was a flying fanatic, and his favorite place to fly was up on the grassy ridge. The robot and the gosling liked to spend afternoons up there, working on the finer points of flying. And it was on such an afternoon that they noticed something mysterious far at sea. Brightville spiraled down to his mother, flopped onto the grass, and pointed to the horizon. Mama, what is that thing? Roz's computer brain found the right word. That is a ship. What's a ship? A ship is a large vessel used for ocean transport. Brightville's face scrunched up with confusion. Used by who? I don't know. It was the first ship either of them had ever laid eyes on. From the distance, it looked as though it was moving slowly, but it was actually racing through the waves. From the distance, it looked as though it were small, but it was actually one of the largest ships ever built. The robot and the gosling watched it crawl across the ocean until it finally disappeared to the south. Where had the ship come from? Where was it going? Who was on board? Roz and Brightville had many questions, but no answers. We'll stop there for today. See you tomorrow.